Hello everyone, welcome to Railway Junction. Our topic for today is Introduction to Railway Brakes. We all fascinate about the speeds and the features of the trains, but we also not need to know about the braking features of a train. So today's topic is going to enlighten all of us about the types of brake system in railways, features of the brake system, terminologies used in railway brake, and application and release of brake system. Now, every time driver sees a yellow signal, he slows down the train and when he sees the red one, he applies the brake and train stops just before the signal. And every time it happens with no failure. How does it happen? So we are going to go deep and learn how it happens. But before we go into that, we'll try to know how we can differentiate between the brake system in the current world. The brake system in the current world can be separated into mainly two groups, vacuum and pneumatic. Vacuum brake is almost obsolete, seems to be used nowhere in the world. And the new era brake system is the pneumatic brakes. The first use of, use of pneumatic brake happened in the year of 1869 by Mr. George Westinghouse. And following that, every continent had set up its own braking standards, like the USA follows the AR standards, which works on the graduation application and direct release, whereas the UIC standard is used in Europe, Asia, India, and many more parts of the world. And where it follows is a graduated application and direct release system. Whereas a GOS is a typical brake system used in Russia, whereas ROE, the Railway of Australia, has made a specification, a mix of AAR and UIC system used for Australian railways. Now, let's have a look at the features of the brake system. A brake system should be of automatic type. That means in case of a train parting or a brake into two, the train brake or the emergency brake should apply simultaneously during the happen of the brake into two. Second one should be continuous. So the brake function can be generated from the locomotive or can be done through alarm chain pull in case of a coach. So the application of the brake should be continuous from the train throughout from the locomotive till the wagon or the coaches. The brake power should be of inexhaustible type. That means there should be enough power in the reserve stored that it can be used simultaneously for many applications. It should be quiet considering the passenger's comfort and the local pilot's comfort. It should be easy to test on the wayside, in the shed or in the standstill condition. And the brake should, system should be gradual. That means the brake application should be of gradual type, meaning jerk free from start to end. Now let's come to the terminologies of the brake system. The terminologies used in brake system are main reservoir known as MR, brake pipe known as BP. BP is the heart line for the brake system. Dropping or charging of the brake pipe leads to application and release of the brake and also it enables the wagons or the coaches to store its own brake power. We'll come to that in the later stage of the video. Then the brake cylinder it's called known as BP and feed pipe that is FP typically used in India for charging the auxiliary reservoir. Let's have the pressure ranges for the brake system. MR has a pressure range of 8 to 10 bar whereas BP has in, having a pressure range of 0 to 5 bar and brake cylinder a typical pressure range is 0 to 3.8 bar but it depends on the type of the vehicle used in the system. And the feed pipe has a constant value of 6 bar. Let's have a look at the AR brake system components. The AR brake system components are comprising of a compressor, a main reservoir, a driver's brake valve, a triple valve, an auxiliary reservoir, and brake cylinder. Supporting to this, we have angle cocks, coupled hoses, and brake blocks. Now, the compressor generates the air and compresses it 
to 8 to 10 bar and it gets stored in the main reservoir and from where it goes to the driver brake valve. To add the point, the driver's brake valve is mostly placed in the locomotive or in the front end of the vehicle from where driver controls the brake pipe. Then the brake pipe of 0 to 5 bar level, it gets pushed to the brake pipe line and to add the information, there is no storage of the brake pipe in a reservoir. It is only the pipe value that is there. Now on the requirement of the brake cylinder is generated by the brake pipe, the triple valve converts the auxiliary reservoir into the brake cylinder and it gets the power to apply brakes on the wheel. Let's see a graph, how it works. If you see the brake pipe in AR brake system, it can be dropped gradually. So you can have steps, one, two steps you can create here while applying. And similarly, the brake cylinder values can be attained according to that. But while releasing, you can see though we are releasing in steps, that means the brake pipe is increasing in steps, but the brake cylinder get released in one shot. So this is a direct release brake system. This is very helpful for long haul trains where you have to release the brake system at one go. Now, if we look at the typically a brake application in AR system. In case of AR, the brake pipe is withdrawn from the driver's brake valve. And what happens? The auxiliary reservoir stored pressure presses the stem towards the triple valve other side, the other chamber where the brake pipe is stored and it opens the auxiliary reservoir connection to the brake cylinder and the brake cylinder is generated. So this shuttle plays a very important role in case of application in triple valve. Let's look at the brake release. In case of brake release, when the brake pipe is charged back again, you can see this chamber now is at higher pressure and pushes the steam back, which shuts the auxiliary reservoir charging to the brake cylinder and the brake cylinder gets free passage to the exhaust. And through a tiny hole in the triple valve, the brake pipe is allowed to charge the auxiliary reservoir for the next application. Now, this was AAR. Now we look at the UIC brake system where it talks about a graduated application and graduated release. Now, if you look at the two curves, the left hand curve is of AAR type, what we have explained earlier. And the right one is of UIC type. You can see from the application point of view, both are same. You can apply the brakes in steps, but in case of release, you can see in case of AR, the brake system gets released in one shot. Whereas in UIC, you can release the brake in steps according to the level of the brake pipe. This gives an enormous advantage in case of passenger trains and short hauled freight trains where you can apply a full brake and then release the brake to a partial level and start taking the train away as quickly as possible when the signal is green. Now let's look at the components of the UIC brake system. This is a twin pipe brake system used in UIC so where it is you can see it's compressor, marine reservoir, driver's brake valve, distributor valve, auxiliary reservoir and one-way valve. So the difference is here instead of triple valve we are using a distributor valve out here and similar for connecting the coaches we have angle cocks, coupled hoses and to apply the brake we have brake cylinder and brake block. So interesting thing in this is that compressor start compresses the air and it's stored in the main reservoir before storing in the main reservoir, there can be an air dryer that processes the air to make it moisture free. We are going to talk about the air dryer and compressor in an another video. Then it comes to the driver's brake valve where it converts into brake pipe and get pushed into the distributor valve and the distributor valve converts the brake pipe 
into our auxiliary reservoir. Here, if you see, there is a one-way check valve is placed connected to the main reservoir equalizing pipe, or it can be a feed pipe also, to charge the auxiliary reservoir. This gives the advantage of charging the auxiliary reservoir in a faster manner, which allows to take the train quickly. So in case of drop or, drop or brake pipe, distributor valve generates the brake cylinder and the brake cylinder pressure gets applied into the wheel and train is braked. Now, if we look in a brake application, in case of uh, UIC brake system, the brake pipe is exhausted from the driver's brake valve and the oxygen reservoir pressure is converted into brake cylinder pressure. Here you see a typical system of a control reservoir, what we are going to talk later, which is kind of a datum allowing the brake cylinder to understand the difference from the previous brake pipe value and apply the brake accordingly. In case of a full release, the air supply the MR is getting converted into driver's brake valve through driver's brake valve and becomes a brake brake pipe and again goes through the brake pipe of the train and to the end vehicle where the end cocks are kept closed and then charging back the auxiliary reservoir and control reservoir checking the brake pipe value releases the brake cylinder pressure to the atmosphere. Now we have seen how the triple valve works. Now so now we see how the distributor valve functions. So what happens is whenever the brake pipe is charged, it goes inside the distributor valve and through this device or the mechanism out here, it charges the control reservoir to the same value of the brake pipe. And the MR is coming out here and sitting here in top of this chamber. And also the brake pipe is connected here through the MR for a specific application and the brake cylinder is open there is no brake cylinder values right now now how application or release happens in case of application what happens is that brake pipe goes out through here which means this pressure value is higher than this chamber which presses the stem up allowing the main reservoir to come through here and go to the brake cylinder and this pressure out here to the brake cylinder also a tiny part comes back to this portion to keep balance of how much brake cylinder values to be applied. Now in case of a release what happens is that the brake pipe is charged back again here. So if you see here now this pressure value is coming back again and the brake cylinder pressure is present over here. So the both the pressure values out here allows the stem to go down here and as being a hollow stem, the brake cylinder value comes through the hollow stem and to the atmosphere through this path. And the control reservoir allows here also to partially resist the brake pipe value and it allows the partial release of brake cylinder according to the requirement and the value of the brake pipe. So this is why the control reservoir is important here for taking care of the graduated release. So now you can see I have explained the brake application and release function of AAR new IC system and this is how every time the train stops at the exact point. Thank you for watching the video. If you do like it, share it. You can subscribe our channel and do click on the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you again.